Hello everybody. I'm gonna make you a Friday video and we're not at the sawmill, I'm in the workshop. It has been a miserable week this week. It has been rainy, windy. Uh, we had over, I think, close to four inches of rain this week, um, flooding, all kinds of stuff. So Eddie and I decided uh, it wasn't worth playing around up the sawmill. So if you remember the American chestnut that uh, Pete had brought us some logs. So I decided I'm gonna make something for that uh, fundraiser up in Corsica. So here it is. So we're gonna go through, and I don't know if the glare's too bad for you on this picture or on this camera, but we're gonna try here. Uh, this was a calendar that the Eastern Loggers Association had put out and I bought, and Pete got his uh, picture in the calendar. So I figured what a good opportunity is to grab this picture out of the calendar and recycle it into this nice picture frame, which we will have, it'll be up for bid at the uh, auction up in Corsica. So a little bit more finish work needs done on it, but it was at least do something in the shop, a little bit of CNC work, uh, and you'll get to see how it got put together. So let's get busy and uh, thanks for coming along and let's kick on. In order to end up with this beautiful piece of wood here, we're starting with just some small pieces. And the method is always the same. I start off with at the joiner. What we're gonna do is flatten them and get one straight edge on them. And then we'll go ahead and get these pieces down into three inch blanks. So let's go over to the joiner here for a minute. And I'll just bring you over here with the camera. And I'm trying to be, as careful as I can by not wasting this uh, chestnut. This is going to be just, it's so hard to find this stuff. So what I like to do when I'm flattening on a joiner, the big joiner, I got a big feeder on it. The little joiner, again, I showed this before, I make up just to push a board that basically hooks to the back side of this and it keeps your fingers attached. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a couple flattening. A couple flattening passes. And you can see how it just brings it alive. So I'll tell you what, it's, it's actually, check it on your table. Nothing's rocking, so leave it alone. So we'll go ahead and put a straight edge on it. pass. All right. And we'll just go ahead over to the planer right now. That way you can see one. There's Troy. Troy's coming along pretty good here. So all I want to do is get this down to a rough thickness. And then we'll give it the final, once we got everything all made up and we're sure we're not gonna change nothing, then we'll go down to our final thickness. So we're gonna start somewhere around seven eighths of an inch. Get rid of some of this uh, stuff laying around here. A lot of projects going on and I'm trying to get some stuff filmed for you. So let me fire up the dust system. Go ahead and get this thing uh, down to thickness. And I like to do both sides because sometimes the joiner leaves a little bit of a chatter in it. So it'll take off a little bit. I would end up somewhere around 13 sixteenths. There you go. That's 
nice beautiful piece of wood right there so the next step we'll get them down to width and once we get them down to our three inch blanks i'll get the router we're going to put a little profile on it we're going to cut a rabbit in it and we're going to be ready to go to the motor box so let's get uh, over to table saw and get this stuff ripped down all right let's get these down to a three inch width and then we're going to go ahead and work on making that rabbit i made a uh, frame out of pine in order to uh, zero the cnc machine and so this becomes my template plus i wanted to check out a few things before i committed to cutting up this wood so let's go ahead and rip these real quick not dangerous without a push stick if it's three inches wide so please don't don't hammer me on a push stick System down. It's a little bit too noisy. All right, we're going to go ahead and set up for this rabbit. I do like this uh, guard that I had bought aftermarket for this saw. I think it's made by Shark Guard. In order to cut the rabbits, got to remove the guard. But what I want to do with this piece here, since it's already adjusted, we're going to set the height of the saw to where it was. We just want to just, as it starts to pick the saw a little bit, that's all we need. So, what we're going to do, we're going to pick the best side up, first of all. This one here is just about perfect. And we're going to set the depth right now for this. I want to be about 5 sixteenths. So if I set the saw at 3 sixteenths, it should give me roughly a 5 sixteenths. Let me see what I actually had on here. Oh, she's running a little heavier than that. You know what, let's go a little bit heavier. And I'll, I'll show you why in the end here. So we're going to screw that back on so it's removable. So with the good side up, I want to check them all right now. And also you want to, if you're going to get rid of any blemishes, you want to get rid of it in the shoulder. I'm always get in the habit of configuring everything so it's ready to work with. So we're going to go ahead and Let's do the first part of this. Making sure it's tight to the table. You could put a dado head on, but this is just as easy. Next step to make this rabbit, real simple. I don't know if I'm getting you a good enough shot here. Wait till the saw stops. You want to do is crank your blade up just until it just cuts into that, cuts into this right here. We want to remove this. Now we got to figure out how deep we want to go with it. And with the I want to go at least 
5 16 so again we're going to go 3 16 eighth inch blade we're going to feed it through this way and you'll see how simple this is and there you go there's a rabbit so we'll go ahead and finish cutting these and this will accept the uh, piece of plexiglass and a backer board and the actual photo. So uh, we'll go ahead and finish this up. We're going to put a profile on it next. Okay. All we're going to use is a round over. And what I've done is just left a little bit of a shoulder here. And what you want to make sure when you have a rabbit on something, make sure that that bearing is going to have enough surface to ride on, otherwise you will destroy your molding. You could actually put this on after the frames together, but if you get some tear out during the routing, uh, there's no replacing the piece, you ruin the whole entire frame. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly, we're just gonna... Taking your time, you don't wanna rip this out. You see the effect. So if we go over to the CNC machine, this will give a nice place for when we're routing in the lettering. And I think that'll be better than just a round over. I didn't want to do nothing on this edge. I think it's good enough the way it is. So let's finish routing this. We'll go to the miter box and cut the miters and we'll be ready to put her together. All right, we're at the miter box and what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the uh, first miter. We're putting the rabbit head in and we're gonna cut the miter out this way and we're gonna get them all cut this way and then I'll show you how I made up a nice little stop system. And if you're gonna make a bunch of, a, just say a certain size frame, it works out really well. Not a big fan of this rigid miter box. It's kind of it's kind of big and awkward, but it works well. It puts a nice miter on it. So we want to just uh, take our time. So what we're going to do is get all these sides cut, and then when we get to this point, we're going to come back over, and I'm going to show you how I got a nice little setup that will do a repeat every time and it'll make a really nice frame. So we'll go ahead and get the first side cut and we'll be right back. All right, we've got the one side cut. And yeah, what I did is I just made up a nice little table, same height as the um, miter box. I already figured this all out. So I got a line here, basically go to my line, little C-clamp. Clamp this on. And we got to turn the got to turn the miter box here. So let me get you out of the way here. I don't wanna don't wanna knock the camera stand over. Waiting for that. This detent don't like to lock in. Of course, it'll do it when the camera's on. There it goes. It locked in positive. All right. Now we're good to go. So basically, what I did, put a set of lines there for my long piece, another line there for the short pieces. And when you bring this piece out, and that tip touches on this stop. You could cut a hundred of these, they'll all be the same. So we'll go ahead and cut this. And actually this miter box was given to me. Make sure there's no uh, dust in here too. Given to me by one of my buddies. And it was so far out of whack, you couldn't get it to cut right. So I spent some time Retuned it back up and it seems to be cutting a good miter. Yeah. 
And there we go. We'll finish the other pieces and we'll go over to the bench and I'll show you how I put them together and we'll see how you like it. To put this frame together, we're going to use a number 20 biscuit. So we're going to cut a slot for the biscuit. And when it goes together, you get a real nice strong joint and everything lines up perfect. So I'll show you how I cut this with a biscuit cutting machine. I clamped it to the bench, marked my lines. So basically we're just going to... And the way this machine works, there's a blade that comes out and cuts the slot. So we'll go ahead and do this one here. Time to start assembling this. And I know it's just nothing more than a picture frame, but a lot of people be looking at it, so you want to make it nice. The way I have always found out with picture frames is I like to do is I work one side at a time. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So you want to get some glue. Just a little bit more in a biscuit there. What we're going to do is we're going to put this together until it fits absolutely perfect. The joint's nice and closed. We're gonna leave this set. We're gonna come over, we're gonna catch this side here. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna let this joint dry and that joint dry for about, oh, 10, 15 minutes. It makes putting the frame together so much easier instead of trying to fight all four corners at one time. So you sort of pick your battle a little bit at a time. So we'll go ahead and... And once this glue sets, you can't believe how easy it is. So let's give this five minutes. We'll come back and we'll assemble the other two sides. While this is sitting in clamps, we're going to take advantage of the time we're going to spray, already did before I put the camera on. We're going to put a coat of lacquer on this because we're going to CNC route this and I'm going to use this product, it's called Aura Mask. And what this will do is this will become a stencil after this is routed. So all we're going to do is peel the Aura Mask back if you're using bigger pieces, sometimes you got to sort of work it on, but if you're pretty good at just sticking something, we want it way bigger than what it needs to be. And we want to work it out with a squeegee. Because this is now going to keep the paint from bleeding over everything. There's a couple ways you can do it. You can seal it, you can route it, and then just uh, use your sander to take all the excess off. But you wanna make sure there's no bubbles left. And this, this will wrap around. We'll put some blue painter's tape on afterwards when we start spraying it so we don't get nothing on the wood. And the ore mask, uh, I learned that from uh, Garrett on, uh, I think it's IDC Woodworking, I believe. The guy is a, he's a guru on the CNC machines. Um, he had taught me a lot. But yeah, you can buy this uh, through Amazon. And I forget, I, I, it's a big roll I bought. And you'll see how nice the uh, bit will just go right through this. So 
So, our next step is to take this over to the CNC machine and we will route in our two things here and uh, we'll go ahead and get them done. We'll spray some more lacquer into the freshly carved wood. We'll paint it and we'll be ready to put a final finish after we get the sanding done on it. So let's go to the CNC machine. Okay, what I've done already is uh, this is that frame that I've made out of pine so I could mark my center points. So this way, this becomes my jig. I put a piece of tape on the right side here and that'll, that'll reference me back. So I basically had went ahead and did my X and Y. So if I move it, if I move it off and I hit my zero again, it's going to go right back to that point. And that's what we want. So we'll go ahead and uh, put our good piece in. And we'll show you the CNC machine carbon this here in a second. There really is no top and bottom at this point. So we're going to put the board in, or the frame in, coming over to our blue tape. And I'm just going to loosely clamp this side. Let's go over to another slot here. Because we come down to this end, there's a good chance that this machine will, if you're over too far, it'll eat the, uh, kind of like the sawmill, if you put the dogs in the way, the machine will eat your dogs. So, now the top carving isn't so big. Only thing we have to do now is we have to zero the Z axis before we're ready to um, carve here. So everything's in nice, making sure there's no gaps underneath the board because that will throw it off. So the Axiom comes with its uh, little, they call it this little puck here. And this will set your Z axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit our tool set button and we're going to do what they call touching it off. So it's going to come down and as soon as it comes in contact with that tip of that bit, we're zeroed. So the computer now knows the top of that surface. So we're going to go ahead and select what we want to do here. So we want to go into the disk. We're going to tell it OK. And then this is just a bunch of projects in here. So look, there's the Eddy. There's uh, the boom. That's the boom plaque. So we're just going to keep coming down until we find which one we want. There it is. We want to, we want to put nuts. So it's going to be nuts 319 up top here. Everything is ready to go. I'm not going to hook the dust boot up. I'll move the camera in a little bit closer so you can actually watch this happen. So we're going to say OK. And we're going to hit OK. And let the magic happen here. So I'll bring you guys over a lot closer here.
it is. So. All right, we're routed. And before we paint it with the final color, we're gonna give it some more lacquer. And the reason I'm doing this, this will seal up the wood. So that way, the paint won't just sink into the wood. So we'll let that dry. Because that, that wood is just like a sponge. All right. We'll let that sit for a few minutes, and then we're going to go ahead and give it the final color. Well, the lacquer is dried, so I just found some red paint I had sitting on the shelf. You could, you could just put uh, acrylic uh, by hand with a brush. So, but I, I kind of like this, uh, this shade of red here. So I'm gonna lay in a few coats. Let them dry between coats, of course. You'll see this really pop once it gets good and good and built up. Nothing says authority like red. I like red. It just looks good. All right. We'll put a couple more coats, let it dry, and next time you see me, you'll get to see what this thing turned out like. And uh, again, this is going to be something for the um, auction for Pete's benefit there. So, all right. Oh, it's been about a half hour since we had talked last, and we're going to go ahead and see how this turned out. Got a little bit of overspray on her, but that will sand off. But yeah, this aura mask really works out pretty well. And I'm thinking, what am I going to make for a Friday video? And I have been at work since we work six to two. So this has been an ongoing project since I got home from work. And I'm trying to get this just so you can just get a good idea of what this is going to look like. But you'll get to see it when it's completely done with the uh, lacquer finish, the final sanding, of course. But yeah, this aura mask, uh, if you're going to do, especially on something that's totally finished, just say that we would have had this uh, completely done. There's where the aura mask really shines. In this case, I'm doing it for more convenience. So, a lot of times you just got to get a little creative with the razor blade or something I like the red though I don't know see what you think in the comments I think the red really did it justice I believe the picture which we'll show you here in a second here I think it had some burgundy in it possibly there we go that's looking better and every once in a while, you just got to get into these little areas that don't like to peel out so easy. But I'm going to take my time here, get these peeled out, and I'll show you what it looks like here in a second. All right, not bad. Not bad. I would not be ashamed to say I made this. All right. So I'm just going to put the uh, artwork in. And if anybody had bought 
calendars from the Eastern, Log Eastern Loggers Association. You'll probably reckon recognize this photo. I like to use masonite for the backboard. Well, the art needs a little trimming here, but we're close. So let me get this. Uh, Just a little bit more work on the razor blade, but we're about there. There we go. So, ready for the big unveil here. And there you go. So, it needs a couple more hours of uh, sanding and finish work. But all in all, I think we turned a calendar photo into... I don't know if that glares too much for you, but... Uh, that's not uh, too bad, so I'll try it one more time here. But you get the idea. So hope you enjoyed this video. And at least you got something for Friday Eve here, everybody. So anyhow, it is what it is. We we try to we try to roll with the punches. It's just been a it was a miserable week. Uh, we we had more rain than I think we had most of the month in two days. So uh, it's, it's just wet, saturated, no sense of going up to the mill and just making a mess. And uh, hopefully we can get up there this weekend. We're hoping it's gonna dry out in time for the weekend. So, hey, thanks for coming along for the Friday video. And you got to see what that American chestnut really looks like. And uh, there it is, That's, it's a pretty wood and wait till this takes to finish. It's going to even look that much better. So thanks for coming along, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right.